Hello, today is August 5th, 2021, and today's video is called Gazing into the Waters. I've just gone through three weeks of an incredible spiritual journey, and I want to share some of that with you in order to help you on your spiritual journey. I went to a local beautiful river that is crystal clear, spring-fed, rock-bottomed, and decided to look into the waters, to gaze into the waters. Of course, we know who the water of life is, but a lot of people don't know who the water of life is. And I'm making this video in large part for those people today. But for those of you who do know the water of life, I think that you will also find things herein that will be enlightening. As I gazed into the waters, I was looking at a fisherman who was fishing for rainbow trout. The fisherman suddenly hooked a pretty good sized trout and began to reel it in. His pole was bending, uh, the fish was a good sized fish. It was putting up a big fight and the fisherman was reeling it in. And as he was reeling it in, the thought went through my mind, we're just like that fish. With everything that's going on in the world right now, and you know what I mean with respect to this thing they call the Great Reset and all of the lockdowns that have been associated with it, and also the mandates that have been associated with it. I had this sense that we were like that fish on the line, that we were the ones being reeled in. And the fish was getting closer to the fisherman as I was thinking these thoughts. And I thought, how can we break free of this? And right as those words went through my mind, the fisherman had got this large trout up to him. He was reaching for his net and he was going to pull it up out of the water to put in the net. And just then, the line broke. And it was also right as I was thinking, how do we free ourselves from what is going on? Well, over the last three weeks, I believe The Spirit has been giving me the answer to that. And I want to try to share it with you in a way that you can understand no matter where you are on your spiritual journey. The first thing to, to understand is that You, like me, are seeking truth. If you're not seeking truth, well, you know, you know you can go to another video now. But you, like me, are seeking truth. And truth has to become 
the number one goal of our life. I want you to do an exercise. I want you to think about yourself. Remember, the kingdom of God is within us. Within us. The kingdom of God is within us. Who are you? Who am I? We need to begin to get a more clear idea of who we really are. But what I want you to do now is it's a simple exercise and it's just this. Examine yourself. Go within yourself. Think about yourself. Contemplate yourself. How do you line up with truth? So as you consider yourself and you consider the truth, I want you to think about how does your life, your very life, not mine, yours, how does it line up with the truth? You understand something about truth. Are there things in your life that do not line up with the truth? Then change it. Begin to make changes in your life. Are there certain things that you do that your spouse just hates? Can you change it? Is it something in you that just needs to be changed and your spouse sees it, but you've, you've never acknowledged it? But I'm not saying to change your life based upon what another tells you to do. I'm telling you to examine yourself and see if there are things in your life that need to be changed. Now I want you to go a step further from that. What is it? What is it that's sitting above myself, letting me see myself, actually allowing me to look at myself and make that kind of a, a judgment? Remember, Paul said, the spiritual man judges all things. Now the world tells us, do not judge, lest you be judged. So what has the world done? It's taking one part of truth and use that to bludgeon us with. Because it doesn't tell us the other part, which is the spiritual man judges all things. And if we were to judge ourselves, we would not be judged. And Jesus said, I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. The words that I speak will judge him on the last day. Paul tells us to take every thought captive to Christ. Jesus said, I only do what I see my Father doing. Jesus said, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What are you putting into your heart? What are you filling your heart with?
there are so many people today who say that they are seeking the truth, but they're doing it with ulterior motives, many of them. They are doing it maybe to get rich, maybe to get famous, maybe to um, get into a relationship with one of their students. Recently, in one of my recent videos, I posted a link to someone named Ewar, E-W-A-R, who did a series of videos that show very clearly that we have been lied to about our history. I first came across it about three weeks ago, three to four weeks now, I think. And when I watched it, and as I watched it, I realized this has utterly changed my paradigm. This has, I can't go back to living the way I did before because I have not understood reality. I have not understood the world I live in. And I knew that because history was not what I had been taught in a huge, huge way, it really does appear that around 200 years ago, there was something so cataclysmic that happened in the earth, on the earth, that it changed everything that we see in the world today and the entire way that we live our lives. It changed about 200 years ago. And once you see that, then you realize that if we have been lied, about all, lied to about all of our history, well, that has to include many of the religious things that we learned as well. And I'm talking now to, especially to Christians, you know, when you, you need to look soberly at your religion. I have looked soberly at mine for many years. And my belief does not resemble what you hear and see in the Christian churches. But I got my belief through seeking the truth, and especially through reading the Bible and understanding that God spoke through his prophets in the Bible. But here we are now, at this time in history where everyone is talking about a great reset. What's a reset? If you reset your computer you restart it or you turn it off and turn it on. You set it back to the beginning. If you reset a stopwatch, you set it back to zero. This great reset that we're seeing is an attempt to set something back to zero, to restart something. But it's not a reset that you and I want to partake in. It's a reset that those who control the world now want to partake of, and I don't want to go where they want to go. And so we have now come to a place in history where we have to make a decision. Are we going to go with the flow? Are we going to follow the world into whatever it is they are attempting to create? Or 
are we going to go in a different direction? That's the point that I want to make today. See, we have to get to the point where we only do what we see our Father doing. Who is our Father? Our Father is God. Now, where does that lead us? Well, it leads us to the place that the world and the church always told us that we could not go. Just before Jesus died, Thomas, was it Thomas? Philip, Philip, I think, asked him, Lord, show us the Father. And Jesus said, Have I been with you so long and you do not know me? You see, Jesus totally identified himself with the Father. He was the Son of God. He was the incarnate Word. He was the Word made flesh. He dwelt among us. He came to his own, but his own received him not. But here's an interesting thing. Jesus also said, I have sheep in other folds that I must go to as well. You see, the Jews were one of his folds. And Jesus came as a Jew to them and revealed himself to them, and they rejected him. But he has other folds as well. In Revelation 19, as Jesus returns, the scripture says that he has a name that no one knows but himself. And upon his thigh is the name, the word of God. Okay, we know the name Jesus. We know the name Jesus Christ. We know, we identify him with the word of God. But yet he has a name that no one knows but himself. I just read a very interesting book called Black Elk Speaks. Black Elk was an Indian who lived in the late 1800s into the 1900s. He saw the wars of the conquerors of America against the Indians and how they destroyed the Indians. But God gave this man, Black Elk, a very powerful spiritual vision early in his life. I think he was nine years old. A vision that remained with him all of his life. A vision that helped him to be a comfort and a healer and a speaker of truth to his people and that helped them. And after the catastrophes that destroyed the his tribe and all of all of the Indian tribes of this country. He describes a time with when several of the men that he trusted went to Nevada to see someone called the Wanakia. Wanakia in that language means savior or the living one. He could not go for some reason. Three people came back. They told him they saw the Wanakia, and the Wanakia, among other th things, told them that he had come to the Wasichu, 
and the Wazichu are the white men who destroyed the Indians in the Indian language. He said, he came to the Wazichu long ago, but the Wazichu killed him. Now this is the Wanakia speaking. Black Elk sees him as the Wanakia, sees him as the savior, sees him as the living one. And here was this man who suddenly appears and you don't hear anything else about him, at least I never have. But he appears to a, a race of people who are being destroyed with words of comfort. Are we not being destroyed right now? Isn't the Great Reset all about destroying God's people? All about destroying the Kodashim? I don't know what's going to happen, but something happened to me over the last three weeks where there has now been a division, a split. I'm not looking at the news expecting some breakthrough. I'm not expecting anybody to say that uh, suddenly they realized that we had massive voter fraud or anything like that. I'm not expecting anyone to show up on the political scene to help us, to save us. And for those of you who watch my series on the mystery of the beast, I wanna say this. I don't think I was wrong. The beast has shown himself and the mark of the beast has come. And those of us who have had eyes to see have not taken the mark of the beast. But the division is here. The split is here. And now we have a choice to make. Are we going to do only what we see our father doing? Or are we going to respond to what the world is doing and do what the world wants us to do? John so clearly said, love not the world or the things of the world. See, the eighth head of the beast somehow was able to clearly reveal the world. We saw things that we never, ever thought about the world, but the world suddenly became very clear to us really what it was, how evil it was, how amazingly evil it is. Come out of her, my people. The call has gone out for a long time. Now the division is coming. The split is coming. We have to make a decision. In that decision, we have to face our own death. Yes, that could happen. But like Jesus, we have to be willing to stand for truth even if it means our own death. It simply means to stand up for truth. No, you are not going to do that to me. You have to be willing to say that. You have to be willing to do that. And you have to be willing to protect those who are under your authority so that they can't do it to them either. Each one of us will have a different decision to make as to how we're going to do that.
We do not see the world as it is. We see the world as we are. We have been lied to about the world. Those who rule the world have created a facade of reality. And I choose not to be part of it anymore. That was the division. That was the split that happened for me within the last three weeks. Our Father will reveal all good things to us. Ask Him. Ask your Father for eyes to see, for ears to hear. We need to see the facade. We need to see the idols. See, we live in a world that is completely full of idols. Everything about it. Everything we're taught. If you don't know yet that the earth is flat, then you need to find out that it is. That's one of the biggest deceptions that the world has given us. They know that it's flat, but they create, the rulers know, but they created the perception that it's not. The real rulers also know the real history of the earth, but we don't. But now it has come to light that we've been lied to about history. And when you begin to look into it, and here's a word for you to look, Tataria, T-A-R-T-A-R-I-A. -A -A. I understand you pronounce it Tataria, not Tartaria, but it looks like it would be Tartaria. Anyway, begin to look up videos about Tataria, and you will see astounding things. And we were totally lied to about our history. There is no way that the men that we were told existed prior, who existed prior to 1820, there is no way that they created the magnificent buildings that we see pictures of. They just couldn't have done it if they were what? we're told they are, but they weren't. We don't know what they were. It, you know, I'm still working through that. I do not yet understand the best that I can come up with at this point is that it was the Revelation 9 of um, what comes out of the abyss the first woe in Revelation chapter 9, and that the first woe utterly destroyed the earth as, as we know it. We don't know what it we don't know what it was. We don't know where the people went, what happened to them. But you know, it's an interesting thing. And this is another reason why I'm saying this today. Even though I do not know the true history, the Word of God has become such a part of my being that 
doesn't matter. I am still going to believe the truth. I am still going to believe the reality of God. Even if I don't understand my history. Now, you would think, well, doesn't that place your entire Bible into doubt? No. No, because in my journey, it has been revealed to me that God wrote the Bible through prophets, through men who were inspired by the Holy Spirit and who wrote exactly what he wanted to say. Do I think we have everything that God has spoken through his prophets? No, I don't. Do I think some things may have been changed in the scripture, in the Bible? Yes, I do. It's very possible. But I also know that my God is able to preserve his word, that my God is able to keep his word, and that my God is able to get that word to his people. There's something that I've stressed over and over and over again in the last years from Isaiah chapter 8 to the law and to the testimony. If they will not speak according to this, it is because there is no light in them. God revealed his law, which are, which is his moral precepts. It tells us the basics of how we should live. But he also gave a testimony of true historical facts. So I believe the Bible is full of true history. It's just that history has been so rewritten in the last 200 years that we don't know what the full history is. We just know that Somewhere back there, there is the Jewish nation, there is Moses, there is King David, there is Abraham, there is Noah, there is Jesus the Christ. It would be worthwhile for you, I think, to listen to this a few times because it contains a lot. It's possible that I will expound upon the ideas herein more in the future, but I have spoken quite a bit about, about these things in the past. But we've come to a, a new paradigm, a new epoch in history, a new age, a new age. The last song I posted is called End of Ages. We have come to the end of the age. We are now beginning a new age. How will we see it? I don't know. Will we have to die in this paradigm to see it? Maybe. I don't know. But I believe that when I die, if there is not a transformation into glorification before that, that when I die, then I will see him as he is. Then I will be like him. And that was, that was a point I never brought to a head when I mentioned something about the things that I say that the world and the church says you can't go there. What is that? 
I am. I am. There's something I need to read to you. So let me put this on pause here. In 1969, the band called the Moody Blues released an album called On the Threshold of a Dream. That was one of the first albums that I purchased. I want to read you now the very beginning words of that album. This was spoken, and the name of the track was In the Beginning. So it begins with a man, and he says, I think. I think I am. Therefore, I am. I think. And then you had this voice speak that I believe represents the world. And he said, of course you are my bright little star. I have miles and miles of files, pretty files of your forefather's fruit. And now to suit our great computer, your magnetic ink. Then the man speaks again. I'm more than that. I know I am. At least, I think I must be. And then you have another voice speak, which I think represents our father. There you go, man. Keep cool as you can. Face piles and piles of trials with smiles. It riles them to believe that you perceive the web they weave. And keep on thinking free. Prophetic? Oh yeah. How? How? How did that happen? Because the Holy Spirit spoke through the one who wrote this poem. And he probably didn't know it. He probably didn't know that the Spirit of God was speaking through him. But he wrote a prophetic poem. And we're seeing it come out into fruition now. And this was 51 to 52 years ago. 52 years ago. The world. I never understood this. The very last part of what the world says, and now to suit our great computer, your magnetic ink. They're trying to merge us with their computer. They are, are they changing our blood into magnetic ink? Are they trying to change our blood into magnetic ink? Why is it that some people are now magnetic? I never understood that. I, you know, I, I knew those words forever, but it made no sense. Now it makes sense. It makes perfect sense, doesn't it? But the beginning of it, I think, I think I am. Therefore, I am. Therefore, I am. When we see him, we will see him as he is, for we will be like him. And he who has this hope purifies himself just as he is pure. So, do you hope to see God? Do you hope to make it? To heaven? Do you hope? Or, or do you just believe what they've told you in your churches? Oh, just believe in Jesus and you're fine. You know, don't worry about, you know, putting away your sins or whatever. No, no. No, see, we have been mistaught. We have not been taught the truth in our churches. It's time to go beyond 
Christianity. Because, see, Christianity was one of the things they created, this false history. Yeah, they used the Bible, they used the Word of God, and created something that is death. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? I think. I think I am. Therefore, I am. So Jesus only did what he saw his father doing. It's time for us to only do what we see our father doing. And then what does that mean? That means that we identify ourselves as a son. As a son. Remember John chapter 1. To those who believe in the word, he gave the right to become sons of God. That's what this is all about. That's what this is all about. To become a son of God. So I encourage you to gaze into the waters. The waters of Yeshua. The waters of salvation. The waters of the word of God. Wash yourself with the word. Immerse yourself in the word. Be baptized in the word. Begin to see the truths of God as they are, not as you were taught. Because we've been lied to. time.